associates Anna, Victoria, and Robin here on the show. And I yeah. have to laugh because I actually realized this when I was on my girls trip um, last week. I was with a blonde, a brunette, and a redhead. It's like my theme. I think I just live my life blonde, brunette, and the redhead. <laughs> she takes applications. Exactly. <laughs> Still in the next group. <laughs> so here we are today, and we are here to talk about the cocktail making account, which is a super cool cocktail we're going to show you how to make. And we are going to talk about making, counting all your expenses when it comes to buying and selling a home because nobody likes a surprise unless it's diamonds. Yes, exactly. And we do have an extra fun today because we are giving away the prize at the end of the show. So very exciting. stay tuned. Okay, let's all right. start with the fun To the part. cocktail. All right. So first of all, you start with just a glass of ice. So a highball glass full of ice, that's all you do. Now, in the recipe, you can see it's asking for certain things. We're going to start with our two ounces of Campari, which is a bitter orange liqueur. I think I'm going to love it. <laughs> there we go. And then what also is here is the fact that we had to do blood orange concentrate. Now, how you make blood orange concentrate is you get a bunch of blood oranges squash them up in a pot, put a little bit of water in there, and then you boil it until it kind of thickens and then cool it down. And that's what we did here. So we have yeah, one ounce. Robin actually made it herself. Let's see, dedication. The dedication to the, to the show. show. Yeah. Then you have honey syrup, which you can buy in the store, but I didn't have, I didn't buy it. I made it with your honey, by the way. Oh, okay. So your honey syrup. So what's the honey syrup? Is it just melted honey or? It's just honey and water. And then you, oh, again, you okay. distill it down and that's about it. Okay. And then you pour in your one ounce of yeah. uh, club soda. Don't put too much of club soda. You better, I like, measure that out. <laughs> and then you stir it. Pretty simple. And you put in your dehydrated. I have dehydrated blood oranges. You can put in oh, any yeah. dehydrated really? orange. Oh, yeah. well, but those are dehydrated funny. blood oranges. Oh, and here is your very pretty cocktail. So what I love about this cocktail is it's actually a really, really kind of bold, Cheers. strong color. So yeah. if you show this to anyone, they're going to be surprised. Kind of pink red. Well, Very I think nice. it's probably going to be like a breakfast cocktail because with all the mm. oranges in it. Mm. It's bitter. It is bitter. It's very Campari forward. I'm yeah, just gonna it like is very Campari forward. Mine. But it is a little sweet because yeah. of the uh, the a... honey. No, the, the honey sweetness syrup. is definitely there, but it's not like like very sweet. But it's really nice. It's more bitter than the sweet, actually. Yeah. But you know what, though? It would be a good... Hangover first thing in the morning drink. I don't know. I like it, but I like Campari. So yeah, like it's a it's a different like if you're a Campari drinker, it's kind of uh, it's something if you want to try different than a Negroni. Yeah, like Negroni is definitely like very boozy, very like, like strong, and Campari forward. It's more like on the bitter side. There was very little sweetness to it. It's a sipping drink. Uh, this one, I would say a girl version of Negroni. Yeah, <laughs> like, you yeah know? that's actually a great, great yeah. call for it. It is <laughs> yeah. a girl version it's of a Negroni. It's sweeter. Um, it's more of a cocktail than a, than a sipper. And it's flirty, like lots of like flavors there. I, I like it personally. Yeah. Like I would definitely like put this on my like star out to this. Yeah. Yeah. And making the, the honey syrup mm. and the blood orange concentrate is not that hard. It does not take that long. It's really just the cooling down of it that probably takes the most amount of time. I don't know if it's Italian, but I feel like I'm gonna be could be in Italy drinking this. I will be in Italy in yes. July. Very excited. Just imagine sitting somewhere in the grove, the yeah. wind speaking to you. You're drinking this beautiful drink. Like I feel like anything that Campari or Aperol or good wine, good yeah. wine, <laughs> pizza. Pizza. <laughs> okay, let's talk about expenses. Mm. Yeah, pizza is one of them, actually. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a buyer and you need help, friends yeah. to help you move, pizza and beer. Yes, yeah, so it always goes a long way. Um, let's just kind of start with one category and then finish it up 100%. and then, yeah, and then go to another one. Let's start with the buying. Sure. So as a buyer, you're going to have to put down what is called a deposit, a deposit of good faith. Now that deposit is not your total down payment. It is a portion of your per of your down payment that you put down and usually kind of be five, 10, 20 grand, depending on the value of the house. Mm -hmm. And it goes towards your total down payment. That is the cost that you'll have to come up with up front, but it does become part of the purchase price on possession. Yeah. Like one of the biggest problems I think we see with uh, that particular 
is that people don't realize they need to give the deposit with upon approval um accepted acceptance offer, accepted offer. offer. and they like have money in this account and money in that account and it takes a couple of days to transfer so on or people are like well i will have this much money if you like in a really small range shopping and you are sometimes deposit equals your down payment uh people are like well i'm gonna have this money in april not today i was like well you have to realize that that the money needs to be on your account and sometimes it needs to be there for 90 days but you need to remember that this amount is like return in full in case yes. your offer is like falling apart or you decided to walk away. Yeah, absolutely. But your home inspection is another cost and that can be mm. around $500. Well, I like how you put the home inspections. Because you can because, have more than one. Yeah, depending what you're buying, there could be different inspections, especially if you're doing like an acreage, there is a water inspection. Sometimes people do sewer. like a soil, sewer, things like that. Yeah. If you're buying condo, there is always condo doc review. It's Which back. we highly recommend. Yeah. And that's about $500. Uh, from 300 to 500 yeah, yeah depends on depends on the condo and uh, sometimes um, your bank will ask you to do a, a pay for your own appraisal and that can be another 500 dollars. yeah like i don't hear it often yeah i think it depends uh on your individual case sometimes yeah, but what is the appraisal actually so the bank when when the bank giving you mortgages you need to be approved and your property need to be approved yes. so in terms of the uh the bank approval your property they sometimes asking for appraisal so they can see the value of the property That's because right. it's bank buying your property and technically it's a bank and you're paying money back to the bank yeah yeah and a moving truck and moving fee. So if you've got a moving truck or you've got movers to pay you, that's another cost. Um, for movers, well, I think it's, I've heard thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars $1,400, depending on how big your house is and how much you have to move. In moving trucks, I don't know, four or 500 bucks. Yeah, it, it bucks. all depends. Sometimes you can borrow it from friends and you can do a new haul. Sometimes you actually have to uh, rent a bigger truck. Sometimes if you have a valuable things that you need special blankets and wrappers. Uh, I had uh, experience moving piano. That, mm. Yes, uh, baby grand. And that needed a special mover. That because the way they handle, them, they, you know, take it out where they set up. They talk to you where you're going to set up as well to make mm -hmm. sure they set up in the right spot. For the piano, not for you, by the way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but right now, moving companies is pretty accurate with what they are doing. I mean, they are packing all fragile stuff, they pack in it, and all appliances. Like, so, I mean, yeah. TV, they're using this yeah. protection thing. So, yeah. so setting up utilities can be another expense. Sometimes it will be cost to incur to setting up your utilities as a buyer. If you want to have your house professionally clean, it is not something unless you write it into your contract. That is required by the seller to do it is not part of the purchase contract as a standard yeah. so we always recommend that you pay to get your house professionally clean don't rely on anyone else because you want to be able to get bring those cleaners back if they don't do a job that you think is satisfactory and talking about utilities uh, if you're buying a condo uh, you need to remember about condo fees so you need to set it up and switch it to your account absolutely and also the the uh the lawyer's fee yeah. When you're buying, buying when, when you're buying the property, when you're signing all papers as the lawyers, and the lawyer's fee is somewhere from starting from twelve hundred and up. Yeah, right usually away. if you're in a condo, it's higher. It's about two thousand to twenty five hundred. But if you're in a detached house, it can be less. You can look on most lawyers' uh, websites, and they have flat fee pricing for the most part. Yeah, so you have to aware that there is a legal fee that the lawyer charges. And there is the fees like for mortgage registration, uh, a stop loss certificate, the like the registration of a title and things like that. There could be additional costs and disbursement costs with Absolutely. a lawyer. So, and but, also they are yeah. doing calculations, for example, property tax. Yeah. yeah. That's or an adjustment. Like, or like uh, HOA fees. They yeah. are doing these adjustments and they give you like the spreadsheet with all the calculations, like the money going here yeah. and there. And you're going to have a like, full amount, total amount, your down payment plus lawyer's fee. And you're going to bring this uh, bank draft to the lawyer, to the lawyer's office once you're going to be signing yeah. documents. And then there's storage fees. So if you have to store your property for any period of time, say they can't fit in your house or you have to delay 
the time you give up one place to get into the other ones. Fees for changing mm-hmm. your mail, believe it or not, Canada Post has charged you for changing and forwarding your mail. Yeah, and, and it's pretty expensive, actually, especially if you have multiple names and if you have a company, it, it's an extra. The, it's more, it's more than it's personal. not always working because, like, I have a lot of clients and they keep receiving the emails from previous owners. Uh, even they did this um forwarding forwarding yeah so but you just need to call yeah. your realtor and like your realtor usually get, get reach to seller's realtor and that's how yeah. it's usually and done. rob online just mentioned that there is fee sometimes for renting out your uh, elevator in your condo building to help move and that is true that is on our list as well as the cost of changing your door locks or rekeying your door yeah. locks so the it is going a, rate is 250 right now to for rekey the, door locks no for the elevator wow and that's not a deposit they used to take it's actual a fee you pay that's a lot yeah. but anyway so and change your door <laughs> locks because as the wife of a police officer you don't know who has keys to your place Please change your locks so that you know you're safe and we know you're safe. I bet lots of people don't. I know. I bet you <laughs> lot. Well, actually, I can tell you I know lots of people don't because there are lots of police calls where people get drunk and end up going to their old house and walking in and the key still works and they're too drunk to know they're in the wrong house. I did. I didn't got that far, but I, I did like when I would be driving to the wrong house and I'm like, oh. I have heard about those calls. <laughs> yeah, so. so now if you're a seller, you're going to need to get an RPR, which is a real property report, the survey of your land and the house and where it is on your land. And you're going to need to make sure that it has compliance. So the RPR in itself is probably going to cost you about $700. And the compliance is going to cost you another $200 from the city of Calgary. Now, if you're compliance and you have any issues, like you have to move a deck, get in uh, relaxation, you have to move something off your property, then that becomes obviously an extra additional cost, which can be anything. Right. It depends how difficult it is. Like even I had to do all my property, which was like very small thing. Mm -hmm. I think I'll end up like in 200s, but I know where people like the build something more substantial would be in thousands. Yeah, absolutely. But that's why it's always a great idea to get your real property report before or just as you're listing your property yeah. instead of waiting until the last minute so those issues can be dealt with dealt with before you get an offer sellers lawyers or sellers fees so a seller has to pay their lawyer to transfer the title and again that varies depending on the property it can be anywhere from twelve hundred dollars to two thousand generally it's much cheaper than the it buyers is. because they don't have to register like a mortgage or anything on title it just kind of discharge you I, I did the, wanted to mention that let's say you guys in a dispute, uh, in a during possession, you usually have to rather possession day, like there is something is not in a house or the house wasn't left to your satisfactory, whatever the failed terms of contract. As soon as the lawyers start communicating with each other, especially by letter, by email or whatever, trying to resolve the dispute. It adds lawyers hours and you get charged extra full legal fees. And that goes for buyers and sellers. Yes, so, exactly. And we need to mention realtor's fee when you're selling your house. Yes. Yeah. So the seller's agent actually uh, technically takes all of the fees out of the sale price of the home. It does not mean that the seller pays both agents. I always like to use the term that there's a big bag of money from the buyer put on the table and the lawyers take out all the fees and then they split the money and then they give it back to the seller of whatever's left over. So technically it's a joint owned money between the buyer and the seller. So that's where the realtor fees come out of. Getting necessary permits if you don't have them, because if you lack a permit on your property, it is a requirement of us to disclose the lack of permit, which is why when you sign your listing contract, there is a thing that says, do you lack any permits for anything on your property? And talking about condo, it's seller's responsibility to pay for all condo documents mm-hmm. that That's right. needed to be provided once the offer is received and accepted. And the cost of leaving attached goods that you didn't consider. Oh, I know, this is for Anna. Yeah. Because sometimes, as a seller, you don't realize that something is attached to a home. And that it is deemed an attached good. And if you don't clarify that you're taking it, then you're going to have to leave it behind. And you may feel very upset about that, especially if it was a personal gift from someone who you care about closely. That's right. So I think uh, definitely when you go on through your house with your listing realtor, make sure you 
point out what's going to stay with the house and what you're definitely taking. But also, too, yeah. your realtor should be asking those questions. I'm going to be yeah. honest. I, mm. I know when we go through houses, we say, is that staying? Is that staying? Is that staying? Is that staying? Yeah. Do you understand that? Well, the show is not for realtors. The show I is know, for the people. And we would like to educate you guys on what is you might expect. Well, just choose yes. the right wheel or who's going to ask you the right yeah, question. Exactly. Exactly. Now, fixing anything that breaks prior to possession. A lot of people don't realize that if there's something in your home that breaks between the day you receive an offer and the day they take possession, it is your obligation to fix it. My microwave got on fire. Like, that sounds terrifying. I know, right? <laughs> I get a call from my tenants and saying that the microwave on its own started to caught on fire. Luckily, there was somebody at home. The noise, but yeah, I had to buy that the microwave hood fan uh, before the possession day come. Yeah, yeah. And now cleaning your home when selling it is obviously not a requirement unless it is in your contract. But it's always nice. But it is a very nice thing to do. Yes. I think you should give up your home to the same condition of which you would want to accept a home. Yes. Yeah. And karma goes around. Yeah. And then when you finally deal with all this thing, you need to consider moving fees, storage fees. If you're mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's the same thing with, with absolutely. like we see a lot of people, like, especially when you're preparing your house, even just to list, so you decide to take things out of your house, you rent uh, containers, yep. they put it usually in your front um, driveway, and you put all the extra stuff there that you don't need in the house already to declutter and open up the space. And those are costs sometimes people forget about too. And if you own a condo, you have to buy all your condominium documents. It has gotten better, but it still is quite expensive and can range from three to five hundred dollars to purchase condominium yes. documents required to give to your buyer who's buying your home. So that is all the long list of buying and selling costs. So now it's price time. Okay, mm -hmm. let's do it. Okay. Oh, hold on. Well, here we go. We have here. tiki glasses. We gotta spin the wheel ready. So I'm gonna. It's like the one time I left my sound on the phone and everybody decided to contact me. All right, let's. Very popular. Uh, there you go. Yes. Let's see who it's gonna be. There's some people who really want it because they love the, every show that we posted. And we appreciate it. Let's see? Oh, Marco Pancho from Instagram. It, is the winner. Mark, I am totally coming on the summer to use this. My ties. <laughs> My ties. All right. So, Mark, you've won the lovely Tiki glasses. Six of this one. Yes. Now, for the month of February, oh, yeah. we are going to I'm be gonna... giving away bitters. Now, this I'm is gonna... a little bit of a joke between myself and Charlene because it's to mark the bitter end of winter. And you know what? I thought exactly the same thing when you said like we're giving the bitters away. I was like, it's like, like get exactly. the bitter winter away. Like exactly. that's exactly what. I but it's know. also funny because it's Valentine's month mm. and it's bitter. Well, there <laughs> is anyone who might be bitter. Yeah. Lavender, cardamom, orleans, and black lemon. Yeah, like your bitters can transform your cocktail 100%. into something completely different. It's always a great addition. And you can Google. There's you have a recipe on the too. back. Yeah. Yeah, that you can create stuff. What Wonderful. Are we, what next are we doing week, next week? Next week, we are between the sheets. Oh, yes. <laughs> We're going to have a surprise for you next week, actually. So, next week is between the sheets, and it is Valentine's <laughs> so Day. So, I missed that planning. It's like me and Robin already planned everything out. Exactly. <laughs> so, it's going to be super fun. Okay. But between the sheets, and we are to going to be discussing how to transfer between single life to non-single life when it comes to real estate so valentine's day we are going to tell you how yeah. to get your real estate from being single to not single it's gonna be so fun i'm looking forward to it yeah and of course yes. how do you win the prize of the february and it's gonna be a short month because like you know well, it's we, a little less short though because it says we have one extra day we have one extra day so it's a little less yeah. short but you basically like and lo love our show, tag people, you know, who will benefit from the cocktail recipe or from the topic we're speaking. And your name will be entered as many times as you do. By We are on, obviously, Facebook Live, Instagram, LinkedIn. YouTube, all yeah. social media platforms. Yes. But you know what? Here's the one thing, actually, I did want to mention since we're talking about costs and expenses. As someone who's bought houses in other countries and all that other kind of stuff, 
you guys have to understand that although we hate how much costs are incurred in our transactions as buyers and sellers, it is a fraction of what I've had to pay in Costa Rica and Mississippi and other places that the cost incurred when buying and selling a house, even in BC and Ontario are drastically higher. So we are very fortunate here to have the costs as low as they are mm -hmm. as much as they grate on your nerves when you pay them. Yeah. And it's all good due diligence, man. Yeah, absolutely. But most importantly, if you're looking at buying or selling a home or know anyone that you like or dislike looking at buying or selling a home, please refer them to Robin Moser and associates, friends, family, coworkers, neighbors, anyone and we would love to help them out and give them great advice and have them make a great decision and start building their real estate well exactly thanks so much for watching stay thanks. warm out there bye